Hey guys, I'm Oliver with Motionary, and today you're going to learn how to create slow motion inside Final Cut Pro. Slow motion is used for so many different reasons in videos, ranging from the drawing of attention to a specific action, increased dramatic context, or even to create a more cinematic looking clip. To ensure your footage still looks smooth when slowed down, it's essential to understand that your footage must have been shot at a higher frame rate than what your project is at. Here's a crash course. If your timeline is set to 24 frames per second and your footage is shot at 60 frames per second, you can slow your footage down by two and a half times. If you try to slow your footage down by more than two and a half times, you'll create a very choppy look because there simply aren't enough frames to fill the time. For now, you're going to learn how to create slow motion and later in the tutorial, you're going to learn some tips on how to shoot better quality slow motion. The clip on our timeline here was shot at 120 frames per second, and we're editing on a 24 frames per second timeline, which means we can slow down our footage by 80% without losing any quality. Select your clip and click the speed meter beneath your viewer window to open the retime menu. You can also access the retime menu directly on your clip in the timeline by using keyboard shortcut Command R. In the retime menu, you have a number of speed adjustments like slow, fast, normal, and custom. Hovering on slow, select the retime value relating to the speed you want your clip to play at. Notice how you don't have an option to slow your footage down to 20%. Not to worry though, because we can create a custom retime speed. By selecting custom in the retime menu, you are presented with another menu to enter in your custom value. You can also access the custom value menu directly by hitting Control Option R. Simply type in your value and hit enter. You can also change the speed by dragging the gray marker at the end of the clip to increase or decrease. Now that you've learned how to add slow motion and customize the speed of a whole clip, how about retiming specific parts of your clip? Commonly referred to as a speed ramp, blade speed gives you the ability to gradually transition from one speed to another. To use the blade speed tool, move your playhead to the place in your clip where you want to change the speed, then go to the retime menu and choose blade speed. You can also get to this tool by hitting shift B. Notice how your clip has been somewhat cut in two as the retime editor shows you two speed values. Whether you want to change the speed of your first or second part of your clip, Select the drop down menu on the clip and choose your new speed. Your clip now shows a gray bar across the blade speed cut, which illustrates the duration of the speed increase or decrease. To shorten or lengthen this, hover over the edge and drag closer or further from the center point. And voila, you've just created a speed ramp and adjusted the length of it. Here's what the clip looked like without the speed ramp. Now here's what the clip looks like with the speed ramp effect. It's super easy to create, but creates such an awesome effect. So there may be times you shoot in a low frame rate, but still want to slow down your footage. But when you do, it starts to look choppy. That's because there simply aren't enough frames to cover the duration. And so the editing software is having to extend each single frame to last longer than just a single frame. Normally, you should stray away from slowing down your footage because it wouldn't look smooth. However, Final Cut Pro has some nifty built-in features to help with that issue. In your retime menu, you'll see a menu item for video quality with two sub-menu items. Frame blending helps by filling in missing frames, kind of like a mini cross-dissolve transition. Optical Flow, however, helps fill in the missing frames by copying data from the previous frame and the future frame to create a new frame in the middle. These two features may not work perfectly for fast moving shots, but for slow moving shots, it's much more effective. So now you can create slow motion and a speed ramp. Let's go through some of the tips on shooting better quality slow motion footage. The crash course on frame rates at the beginning of this tutorial highlighted the importance of shooting at a high frame rate. So if you know you want to slow a clip down when you come to edit, try shooting at a high frame rate like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. However, one of the problems with shooting at a higher frame rate is that the viewer has more time to pay great attention to video quality. As you try to shoot at a high frame rate, you may be forced to shoot at a lower resolution than 4K or 1080p. So if you can, try not to go below 1080p so you can maintain high video quality. One final trick to know 
is that shooting at a higher frame rate and then slowing down your footage can give the appearance of covering up any unwanted shake. And there you have it. You've just learned how to create slow motion, use the blade tool, and some tips on how to shoot high quality slow motion footage. So guys, that's it from me. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create slow motion inside Final Cut Pro helpful. And feel free to check out all the awesome Final Cut Pro templates, transitions, effects, stock footage, and more we have to offer at Motion Array. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.